In this video, I'm gonna answer all the questions you've been wondering about getting a co-founder, including how to find a co-founder, do you even need a co-founder to start a successful business? What to do if you're not technical? How to split equity with your co-founders and a bunch of other questions you have. By the way, stick to the end of the video. I've got a special guest, Chad Boyda, my co-founder, who's gonna talk about the first time we met and what it's actually like to work with me as a co-founder. Do you need a co-founder to start a successful business? No. Is it super helpful? Hell yes. There is no way that AppSumo.com would be nearly a $30 million revenue business without Chad as my co-founder. Here's some helpful stories for you. So in my previous company before AppSumo.com, there was three co-founders, including myself, and each one of us thought we were more important than the other, which caused a lot of problems. Imagine it like a three-headed dog. The dog never moved and we stayed in the same place because we were all going in different directions. So when I started AppSumo, I was super intentional in saying, I do not want any co-founders, I don't want anyone involved. So I ended up hiring a lot of freelancers, including Chad, who became my co-founder, and he worked for free for six months. After actually doing it, the business for about a year, I realized I did need a co-founder and I had some weaknesses. Things that I was weak on was pattern matching, certain technical abilities, certain data analysis, and a little bit more of a structured, slower approach than my more impulsive business style. So how do you decide if you actually need a co-founder? One, learn from the most successful companies. So think about the biggest company that comes to mind for you. Is it Google? Is it Facebook? Is it Amazon? So a lot of these companies, Google had Sergey and Larry. Facebook had Dustin and Mark. Amazon, Jeff did do it by himself, but he had a lot of helpful people with him. So you have to realize that most successful big ass businesses have had at least two people, Jobs and Wozniak. So number two, go do it alone and see how it goes. Maybe it is actually amazing. You don't want anyone part of your party or you realize that it's kind of weird to party alone. So my suggestion is try it first. You can always hire people instead of making them co-founders. So number three, this is critical. Do not use co-founders as an excuse from starting a business. As part of monthly1k.com, which is our course on starting businesses, I've seen thousands of people say, well, I need a technical person or I need the salesperson. And they use that as a way of never actually starting the business. Don't be that person. Number four, realize that co-founders is a marriage. It's not a date. And maybe you should go on some dates and some foreplay and role play before you go jump into bed with the person. I had no idea some of the people I've given equity to in our business, they'd still be around 11 years later. So make sure you take it really seriously versus just jumping into bed with any business partner that you meet. And number five, is this person great for now or forever? Because a co-founder and people you give equity to and ownership in the business are forever. And maybe they're actually better for just something that's you pay them in cash for right now. If you are loving this video so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. I put out three gorgeous videos every single week to help you on your business journey, as well as for people who are subscribed with notification bells, you get exclusive access to special office hours, giveaways, and other bonuses that only notificated people find out about. If you are looking for a co-founder, use the comments below to actually network and connect with other people, and it would be amazing to see some people find co-founders from this video. So number two, the big question, how do you find a co-founder? Here are seven effective ways of doing that. Number one, when you don't need them. So I built AppSumo by myself with a guy named Muhammad in Pakistan for $50 over a weekend. And the thing that I always thought about from that experience was when I had something built that had some customers, that had some momentum, it was much easier for me to convince people to come join me versus the other way around, which is like, hey, come do all this work and hopefully this will be successful. So go and get things started and then start recruiting or looking for people to be co-founders. And plus, they might actually come to you. Secondly, look for past customers or service providers. Chad Boyda, who's now the partner with me at AppSumo, was my first customer at my last business. So is, is your lawyer impressive? Is your accountant impressive? Has someone emailed you cold that you really liked? Is there a customer that you really liked? Go back and look within your own network, specifically of people that you've interacted with and see if they are available. And if they're not, ask them for a referral. Number three, go look on Product Hunt. Yeah, so I do this. A lot of times I go look on ProductHunt.com or AppSumo.com and I see what are amazing products and who's building them. Start those relationships now and maybe you can work with them on their product or work with them together on something in the future. Number four, ask three of your most impressive friends. So who are your most impressive friends? Who would be mine? Andrew Chen comes to mind. He's one of my best friends. He's a general partner at Andreessen Horowitz. Think about the people that come to mind right away and go ask them for a recommendation. Number five, attract people to you. So one of the most effective ways you can do that is through video, through blogging, or through a newsletter like sendfox.com. Start putting out content so that people actually start coming to you inbound versus you going out and trying to push yourself. Number six, look at underappreciated talent pools. So something with YouTube that we tried out recently is we found people at USC Film School that just graduated. And I hit up this guy named Luke and I said, hey, why don't you come make videos? So think about it. schools nearby you or the classes nearby you. Where is there an underappreciated, amazing talent that you could find as a co-founder? And the last one is that look at incubators and accelerators in your area. So if there's maybe not like Combinator, but maybe it's something locally in Austin like Capital Factory, go and ask the founders or people that are involved there 
Who are the most amazing companies or people that you think I should be talking to? Those are great people to find as co-founders in the future. So here's a pro tip. This is the best way ever to know if you found the right co-founder. Ask yourself, would I want to start my next business with him or her? If not, maybe you're not with the right co-founder. Number three, do you need a technical co-founder to start a technical business? No! Absolutely not. And I know that's counterintuitive, but I was able to start AppSumo.com for $50 with a guy named Muhammad in a weekend. And so you're thinking to yourself, I know what you're thinking. Well, Noah, my thing is way more technical than yours. It's a marketplace. I have to build it. Take a step back. What is a marketplace? It's a buyer and it's a seller. You can connect them without any website. And eventually you might need a website. But then you're like, no, no, no. Mine's even more technical than that. I've got a VR app. Okay, what's your VR app? It does this crazy thing. All right, so the VR app, you're gonna build it, put it in the Oculus store, and magically it's gonna make money? Probably not. My recommendation for you, if you're excited about doing VR or something insanely technical, is see if you can get customers or some interest list, and then once you've had that, you can find a technical co-founder or just get a developer to build it for you. But my point that a lot of people do is they use that as an excuse from ever getting started. As well, you can go use toptal.com, which we use at AppSumo. I've used freelancer.com upwork.com as well as fiverr.com to find someone that can help you on creating your first product. Number four, really sensitive question. How do you split equity with a co-founder? The worst thing you can have a business is that when one person thinks they're more valuable than the other and there's a lot of resentment and animosity in the company. You want that alignment and everyone feeling appreciated. So the way that I did it with Chad that I would recommend for you is I went to Chad and I said, how much equity do you want? And he said his number. I don't feel comfortable sharing it. It's his business. He said his number. I said, sure. And funny enough though, the first two months of us working together, I thought, man, this guy got a great deal and I'm getting screwed. And two years later I said, wow, he didn't really ask for enough. And then he actually came back and asked for even more equity at a later point and I was excited to give it to him. So I like the idea of ask the person what they want. If it's within reason to you, give it to them. You want people getting what they want. That's an amazing way to run your business. It's something for you to think about. Equity is forever. Remember that I've given out equity to advisors or if you give it out to your co-founder, they're gonna have it for the indefinite future of your business. So be considerate when you're giving that out or considering these amounts. So my final suggestion with equity is that it should be earned and not given. It can be okay to structure it and say, I'm gonna give you equity over a period of time or if I'm gonna give it based on performances, is that the equity is gonna be for a long time in this business, hopefully you're gonna do really well, so that you wanna be sensitive to just giving it out willy-nilly, as my grandma Mima used to say. So number five, what should you look for in a co-founder? Five things that you're gonna look for. Number one, make a list of all the things you suck at or that you don't wanna do, and that's what you're looking for help with. Number two, be aware of the personality compliments, not just skills, this one is really important is that I'm actually more emotional, I'm not really technical, and I can be very impulsive in the way I do things. And so one of the beautiful things about working with Chad, besides that he doesn't have a lot of emotion, he does, he just doesn't show it, and he's much more smooth. So when I'm kind of fluctuating, that really balances out the relationship. Uh, think about Jobs and Wozniak, you got this quiet nerd engineer, and you got the loud mouth, kind of like me and Chad. So think about personality-wise, not just technical skills with your co-founder. Number three, you wanna see what type of adversity and challenges this person has faced in their life. You have to realize in every single business, no matter how successful, they're gonna face adversity, and you wanna make sure that this person can overcome adversity as well. You're most likely gonna be sticking with them for at least 10 years, so you wanna make sure that they can do it over a long period of time. And number four, I'm gonna say this again because I think it's so important, in looking for a co-founder, if you're not really sure, go on a lot of paid dates. So you can just pay people to work for you, and over time you can see, is this someone I want actually more involved in my business, or I'm happy keeping them in as a distance. One of the things about a co-founder that you can consider is that they are buying into the long term of a business versus just, hey, you're an employee, I give you cash, you give me your service, and you're gone. And you have to consider how much you want them involved in your business or not. And last thing to look for in a co-founder, how do you know if you found the right one? It's just like relationships. First, you know when you know, and you'll know. It's obvi. Obvi, I guess, is what the kids are saying, but you'll know when you know. Second thing to consider is that imagine them gone. So your co-founder that maybe you're working with today, if Chad was gone for me or if your co-founder's gone for you, what would be missing? And imagine that. And if it actually would be fucking horrible, you found the right co-founder. My co-founder soulmate, Chad Boyda. It was about two years after we started working together and I went to him and said, I feel depressed, I don't feel like working and I need to go backpack India alone. What would you say if your business partner came and asked you that? Chad said, go. I really want you to be happy. And that was the moment that I realized that I found the most amazing co-founder to help me grow AppSumo.com and Sumo Group into an eight-figure business. Moral of the story is that co-founders matter. Blah, 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 hit the like button. My producer told me to say that. I guess that's what all the kids on YouTube are doing these days. So number six, this is a question that you guys have been asking is, what is my relationship with my co-founder like? Instead of telling you all the great things about our relationship, I'm gonna tell you about the two times that we've almost broken up. Uh, one was about a month into the, him joining as a co-founder. 
uh, he had equity in the business and I was like, man, this guy sucks. And he probably thought I sucked too. And what we actually realized is that I had no idea what he was working on. He had no idea what I was working on. And we'd only be talking every other week. And when he came back, I was like, that's all you've done? And he's like, well, what have you been doing? As well as recently, three years ago, Chad and I got into a huge argument around the business because we did not align on the vision. Uh, and it was dramatic. There, Chad walked out screaming, I'm yet mad. And he literally was about to quit that day. And luckily, thank God, he did not. So here's a few things that really improved and has helped our relationships that I recommend it for you and your co-founders. Number one, you've got to agree on vision. Even if you don't agree on how to get to the vision, you have to agree that we're trying to go to the same place together. If you guys are trying to go into different destinations, you're gonna be a three-headed dog, and you're gonna stay in the same place. Number two, you've got to talk regularly, even if you've got nothing to talk about. So Chad and I talk every Tuesday and every single Friday. Sometimes it's about the weekend, sometimes it's about the book I'm working on, sometimes it's about hall drop, whatever Chad is, or his new baby, hi Dash. But the point is just you gotta make sure you're talking regularly. It's a great way to keep the relationship healthy. Number three, we did not share what each other was working on. So Chad felt like he was an employee and not a co-founder. So you have to make sure it's a symbiotic, that's a businessy word, relationship where I know what he's contributing and he knows what I am contributing at all times. So there's never that imbalance of value. And number four, you gotta ask each other for help. One of the things that's hard in business sometimes, especially for males, is that, hey, can you actually help me? And so I've actually, uh, in our quarterly feedback, I've said, Chad, I need you to help me more. And sometimes I need to ask you for more help. So make sure that you're talking to each other about the help that you need in the different parts you're working on. That's why you have a co-founder. Trust at the end of the day in these co-founders is the most important part of the relationship. I wanna trust that Chad is always making phenomenal decisions. I want him to trust that making these videos to help you out is the most valuable thing that I can be doing as well. So number seven, how to manage conflicts and disagreements with your co-founder. Uh, I told you guys three years ago, Chad and I had this amazingly huge blow up uh, and we almost ended our relationship. Uh, and I actually thought that I was too good for Chad. When he walked out and actually stepped out for a few days, I was like, well, I don't even need him. I did this all myself, big, big ego, me, 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 me. After he left for a little bit and I tried to do everything myself, I realized, holy f I need this guy. And then as he started helping me more and actually contributing me more, it reminded me of how invaluable Chad is for me and the success of our company. Someone was asking, did we try relationship counseling? So we actually talked to a relationship counselor, a business counselor, and for $15,000, he would give us a few sessions. And when I proposed that to Chad, he was like, it's $15,000? No, let's just work it through. We don't need to spend the 15 Gs. The thing to think about in disagreements and conflicts in your relationship is that disagreements should be encouraged. You should have someone who's showing you a different point of view from the one you already have. That's how you're gonna get better. When you have disagreements and you're challenging each other, the thing that's most important on is that you agree on the destination and you're aligned on the vision. As long as that is the case, you are gonna be successful. Let me give you an example of that. Right now, we have halldrop.com. That's H-A-U-L drop.com. And it's a site online where we promote dope ass physical products. You should go check them out. Chad and I agree on the vision. It's the place to promote dope ass products. We agree on the goal, increased user engagement. We have certain targets there. But how we actually get there, I actually have different ways that I would approach it versus him. But the point is, is we're agreeing on the destination, we're agreeing on the goal, how he wants to get there, that's the fun part for him to go do versus having his co-founder yell at him and tell him what the hell to do and run the business. What's really important is the opposite side of that fence, which is complimenting your partner. It's something that gets really lost, especially if you're running a business and you have employees or teammates, as I like to call them, you always compliment or recognize them. But sometimes you gotta look at your wife or your husband or your business soulmate and say, hey man, I really appreciate how you did that. Hey, I really recognize how you did that. One of the ways that we do that in our company is every Friday we have a meeting called Court, which is Knights of the Round Table. And we do a highlight or prop section where we recognize each other. And we try to do it every week to recognize our business partners as well as the people we work with. I encourage you guys to try that out yourself. So now you're actually gonna get a special message from Chad, my business partner, who is not a very public person, but he's gonna talk about three things, how we first met, what it's like to work with me, and recommendations on finding a co-founder. Take it over, Chad. Hey, I'm Chad. Um, Noah and I have been working together as co-founders almost 10 years now, but we actually started working together a few years uh, prior to that. Uh, it was Thanksgiving weekend and I was in New Jersey visiting my girlfriend's family at the time. And we had gone to the city for the day and we get back and her mom's like, hey, this guy uh, has been calling all day for you. He left his name and number. And I'm thinking like, you know, who even knows in here? How'd they get this number? That's pretty crazy. Like, what does this guy want? Uh, so I call him back and I'm kind of annoyed and I'm like, hey, you know, it's Thanksgiving. I'll talk to you on Monday. So I, I fly back home and on my flight home, uh, you know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I, I like this guy's hustle. Like it's, you know, it's Thanksgiving, uh, you know, and most people are with their friends and family and 
vacation and this guy's out, you know, pitching his starter. So I call him back on Monday and he's like, hey, uh, you know, our mutual friend Andrew Warner says you have a social gaming company. I'm starting a social gaming payment company and I'd like to make you more money. Which, you know, to me is like no renter. Like, why wouldn't I? Um, so I actually became their first customer, their first client, and we started working together that way. Um, you know, the product helped me make more money, so I started giving them a lot of great feedback uh, around the product and features that I was looking for and things that would help me make even more money. Um, and, you know, I thought it would help them make their product better and get, get more, more customers. So we just continued working together in that kind of relationship for several years. Uh, I think even at some point Noah just gave me access to the um, source code because like, I you kept making so many feature requests. Um, so you know, fast forward several years later, I was looking to get out of the social gaming space. Uh, I was kind of burned out, um, and uh, Noah had exited the space already. And uh, you know, we were chatting, and he said, you know, I just started this new thing called AppSumo. Uh, why don't you come help me on it? And, you know, I thought back to um, how awesome it was just working together on, you know, on their product and, and giving each other feedback. Um, and the fact that from the very beginning, this was just, you know, some guy that's like hustling and won't stop. Uh, and to me, that was like a really, uh, you know, important characteristic to look for in someone. You know, I've had a lot of different companies, a lot of different co-founders. Uh, and perseverance, I think, is the most important thing. Uh, usually companies fail, you know, not because, you know, of the business itself, but more that people uh, give up. You know, they quit, they get tired, uh, they get bored, they lose interest, you know, they don't push through the hard times. Um, and to have someone who, you know, won't stop and just will keep going, I think, to me, is really key. And that's what I would always look for uh in a co-founder and would recommend anybody does um so uh you know i decided to start working with him on AppSumo and actually worked for free almost the first year um just because you know i love the product i loved working with him um and things took off and so we really formalized everything and uh here we are almost 10 years later still going at it uh, you know, and there's been several ups and downs throughout the years. So um, there's been a few times where we almost completely stopped working together. Um, and almost every one of those times, we, we sort of, in hindsight, really recognize that it's almost always due to a, a lack of communication. You know, when the communication broke down, um, you know, things got, got rough because we just weren't aligned. Um, and so we really have recognized that sense and created a system where uh, you know, we talk every week, two to three times a week minimum. Uh, you know, even if we don't have anything new to talk about, you know, we're just shooting the shit, like, uh, to just keep in communication and make sure that we're on the same page and that we're aligned. You know, we disagree and we uh, we disagree a lot, uh, and that's fine as long as we are aligned in the direction that we're going and, and you know, what we're trying to, to do and achieve ultimately. Um, and to have someone, you know, that will be there and, and keep pushing through and keep going no matter how hard things get. Because there's going to be so many ups and downs throughout your venture. Um, and, you know, it's not just it's not just business. It's um, it's personal things that you go through and down days that you have and you want uh, a co-founder who will be there to help lift you up, help carry you through those days. Um, you know, who will keep pushing you and you'll keep pushing them and you can be there for each other um, in, in that regard because that's the most important thing to success is to keep trying uh, and keep learning from the failures and keep iterating and keep moving forward. So if I could give any advice to anybody looking for a co-founder would be to look for someone, uh, you know, who, who has perseverance, you know, talk to them about personal challenges they've had in their own life and how they persevered through those you know did they run and hide or did they you know confront those obstacles and find a solution to move forward because um, that's really what you're going to need you know you you're going to need someone who when you are having a really bad day or a really bad week or a month 
or even a really bad year, who will be there to, um, you know, continue to support you and, and help you get through it and together get through it and, you know, be successful. Here is a quick recap on finding co-founders. Without Chad, my business partner, I would not be at all close to where I am today. It says something and hopefully that inspires you in your business journey. Number two, no one is self-made. No billionaire or millionaire is self-made. Everyone is team and people made. So you're gonna need people no matter what. Maybe it's gonna be a co-founder. Maybe it actually might just be better as an employee, but you can't do it alone. Number three, I gotta remind you, you have the skills. Yes, you, I know you might be doubting yourself, but I believe in you, dog, come on now. You can do it yourself. You should start yourself and don't let co-founders be an excuse from actually getting something going. Be on the lookout for amazingness and phenomenal people at all times, at the restaurants, in emails, on social media, on YouTube videos, and connect with those people all the time as regularly as you can. Do not be like Britney Spears, Andy Lope, as fast as you can. If you're thinking about a co-founder, go on many, many dates, see how the relationship is, see where you guys are complimenting on skills as well as personality, and hopefully you'll have amazing marriage. Love you. If you've watched this video, I'm guessing you're probably trying to start a business, and if you are, I recommend the video up here about how I've started multi-million dollar companies in a weekend and how you can do it for yourself. As well, here is a custom playlist, which is my top videos for entrepreneurs getting started. I love you, and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.